Today, I'm going to unbox a Jet KVM, show you what's inside, and an explanation of what a Jet KVM is. The KVM is, stands for Keyboard, Video, and Mouse, and the idea here is very simple. This is essentially a tiny computer, and you're going to put it on your home network. It has to be wired. It's not wireless. And you can connect it to another computer on your home network with a USB cable and an HDMI cable. From that point forward, you can open a browser on any other phone, computer, or other internet-connected browser, punch in the IP address that will be on the display screen, and you have access to the remote computer. And if you want to access that remote computer from anywhere in the world, you would simply set yourself up with the Jet Cloud service, or there are other ways that you can securely control and have access to a remote computer. And the great thing is, is you never have to install any software, and you don't have to pay any subscription fees. So essentially, this little computer is what you're buying. The computer has software on it that you own for life. It does get free updates from time to time to improve its security, reliability, performance, etc., just like anything else. For the low cost of what this, what this costs you, you are never going to pay another penny, and you are able to even turn computers on with Wake on LAN if those computers are turned off. And if you have multiple computers that you want to control, you could buy one of these dedicated to each computer you want to control, and you can control them very easily with very little configuration just out of the box. And if you want to access them from anywhere in the world, you would set yourself up with a uh, secure um, VPN tunnel, which is all built in. You just have to configure it yourself. So very simply, when you buy one of these, let's open it up and I'm going to show you what's in the box. Everything you need to get started is here. As I mentioned, the big deal about this is you're not going to install any software ever. This is, and I want you to think of it like this, its own little tiny computer. So it needs an internet connection. The computer you want to control will also need an internet connection. And aside from that, this essentially takes over for your computer's monitor that you want to connect to. And it will translate your keyboard and mouse movements in your browser to what's happening here. You can even make this full screen in your browser so it looks like you're right there on location in front of that computer, including accessing the BIOS, which you cannot do with software, and um, pretty much anything you can do sitting in front of the computer, you can do from anywhere in the world with this little device. That's how amazing it is. Let me give you a close-up. Probably should hold it right side up. <laughs> The reason I'm holding it that way, there's a little pull tab here that opens up like a drawer. And inside, you'll see here, we've got the Jet KVM device. Look how tiny it is. It's all metal, and it has a, that's a 1.8 inch touch screen that you can slide back and forth. You can't change anything, it's just an information screen. We've got a little plastic here to keep anything from getting scratched or rubbed in the packaging. So it is shiny and clean. So that's your main remote device right there. That's how little that is. And then in the rest of the uh, in the box, the rest of what remains is this little white box here, which if I can get it out of here, that's actually the most difficult part of setting this up is just getting everything out of the box. We have a small instruction manual right here. Of course, they have online documentation at JetKVM. And if we open up this box, the cables we need should be in here. And there you go. We've got a USB A to C cable. And that's going to plug in in the only place you can plug it in in the back. You can't get it wrong. If it fits, you've got it right. We've got a short HDMI cable. And this is going to replace where your computer monitor is plugged in, in the back of the computer you want remote control of. So it's got these little dust covers. We'll take those off. And you'll notice these cables are relatively short because this doesn't, this shouldn't be far away from the computer you're trying to control. And this is a regular HDMI on this side, and this is a mini HDMI on this side. Again, it only will plug in one place, so if you plug it in the right hole, <laughs> you've got it. 
And then finally, we have to give this internet access. This is not wireless. It will need a wired connection. Now, you'll say it's got these two holes. They look like network connections. One of these is a network connection. One of these is a serial connection. They're two different sizes. I know to the untrained eye, they look identical, but your network cable will only fit in the right, the proper one. And so if I grab you, if I grab a network cable to demonstrate to you, I've got one right here, and we're going to plug that in. Does it go in there? Won't fit. Will it go in here? Then that's where it goes. <laughs> that easy. Then we will take this and plug it in, plug in these two cables, an ordinary average everyday USB and a regular ordinary everyday HDMI. At that point, this will turn on and it will boot up. It's completely silent. There's no fans in it or anything. It's all passively cooled. It's going to display an IP address on the screen in just a few minutes when it powers on, if I had plugged it in. And you will type that IP address in any computer's browser, even on your cell phone or your tablet, and it will pull up the desktop display and allow you to control the mouse and keyboard. That's it. You're done. You'll, you'll go through a little setup. You should check this for updates and download any updates right away uh, just to get the best experience with it. And then once you get that established on your local network, at that point, you can look into setting up the Jet Cloud service, which is very easy to set up so you can access from anywhere in the world. This is an incredible tool. And these used to be thousands of dollars for large corporations to, re, uh, to do maintenance and repairs and upgrades and all the other things that IT departments do in large corporations and data centers that are what we call headless. They don't have monitors. These are those you know, long hallways that you see like on TV of towering lights. How do they configure those? Usually with a KVM, it's about this big and a lot of money, very industrial. This brings it to the home user in an affordable package. It's fast, it's reliable, it's tiny. And again, no subscriptions. You buy it once, you own it for life. I would love to demonstrate it to you, with, but it's very difficult without exposing all the private identifiable information regarding individual networks. But there are a lot of other videos that you can find online and articles you can find online if you want to learn more about it. But it's very easy to set up, and they have a great website as well that can walk you through the process. But for the most part, if the plug fits, you've got it in the right place, turn it on, wait for the IP address, type that IP address in any computer's browser on your network, you should be hooked up and good to go. It's truly that easy and that affordable. And if you're wondering, what is this other cable I've got here? This is uh, something I almost forgot to tell you about. This is a USB-C splitter. And the reason that exists is that you might want to provide separate power to this away from the computer you're controlling. If the computer you're controlling is turned off, and if that computer turns off the USB ports, then this turns off. If this is off, you can't access it anymore. So the reason they include the splitter in that scenario, then you can provide power like a cell phone charger to keep this powered on at all times. That way, if the computer you're trying to connect to is turned off, you can configure it for something called wake on LAN, where you send a magic packet. And I realize some of this may be a foreign language, but basically what I'm telling you is it's most computers have the ability to wake on LAN. So if the computer is turned off, as long as this maintains power, either through the USB port or through the splitter that you can provide like a cell phone charger to it to keep it powered on, this is a computer. You are always connecting to this. You are never connecting to the remote. You're connecting to this. This is what's connected to the remote. And by waking it up, you're turning it on if it's off with wake on LAN. Most computers do support that. And I won't get into it in this video, but if you're interested in that, there's a lot of information online that will walk you through it. And most people won't even need this splitter. That's why I didn't even think to talk about it. Because generally speaking, this is all you're going to use, and you're good to go for remote access anywhere in the world and no further expenses ever. Again, I hope the video helped you, and thank you for watching. Bye for now.